So welcome to this session on Scopus, the Dream Research Database. Uh, my name is Elaine Sullo, and I'm the Coordinator of Information and Instructional Services at Himmelfarb Library. So Scopus is a very large, multidisciplinary database of peer-reviewed literature. And it calls itself the largest abstract and citation database. So it's a huge database. And you can see that from the numbers listed on this slide. It covers 60 million records, over 21,500 peer-reviewed journals. Um, so it's a huge resource. And it is a great database for all subjects. Um, so it has health sciences, life sciences, physical sciences, social sciences, and humanities, and more. And one of the reasons that I like it is if I'm doing a literature search, I've always search Scopus in addition to other databases. And I always seem to find content in Scopus that I haven't found somewhere else. Um, so I like it for that reason. Um, and some other reasons that you'll see once we do a search within the database. So why should you search Scopus? So because databases index different journals, there is some different content in the different databases, although there is some overlap. And if you're doing a literature search, you definitely want to search multiple databases. So you'll be sure to capture what's been published on a specific topic. And so if you're searching for a public health topic, for example, you might want to search PubMed or Medline and Scopus and several other databases. And another plus uh, with regard to Scopus is the cited by information, which means that if you find an article that you like, you can see what other articles have cited it since it was published, which might lead you to additional literature on your topic. And again, you'll see this when we go into the search demonstration. But so those are some of the reasons why Scopus is a good choice. Here I am on the library homepage himmelfarb.gw.edu, and this is where you can access Scopus. So in the left-hand box titled Popular Resources, you'll see Scopus listed right here, and so you can access it easily from the home page. These are some of the things that we're going to talk about during our session tonight. So we're going to do um, some sample searches, and we'll spend most of our time talking about doing a document search. So finding articles, uh, whether you have a title and finding the full text, um, or doing a topic search, and then looking at references and the cited by information that I mentioned a minute ago. And then uh, you can analyze your search results, uh, which again, I'll show you in a few minutes. You can search by author, so we'll do that. And then we'll also talk about, once you've done your search, how to manage your citations. So you can create a list, um, you can create a bibliography, so Scopus will help you format citations in different reference styles. You can also export citations to RefWork. And then uh, we'll talk about using uh, My Scopus account if there are certain things that you'd like to do in Scopus, such as save your searches or create alerts. Um, and again, we'll talk about that during this session. So for this search in Scopus, the sample topic that we're going to use is what is the effect of e-cigarettes on smoking behavior? So before you dump, jump into searching, whether you're using Scopus or any database, uh, my advice would be to think about your question, think about your key concepts, and actually make a list of your keywords, key concepts, synonyms, and phrases before you jump into your search strategy. So in this example, I've created a column for e-cigarettes and then a column for smoking behavior. And so these are my two key concepts in my question. And I want to think about how the literature out there is talking about these subjects. And so how are the different ways that they are representing these concepts? So for example, um, for the concept of e-cigarettes, they might be spelling it out. So some articles might call it e-cigarette or e-cigarettes. Others might be calling it electronic cigarettes. So you want to think about all the different ways that you can think about the topic and all the different ways that it's represented with phrases and keywords. Uh, another one is vaping. There might be others. These are the ones that I thought of. 
And then for the concept of smoking behavior, um, you certainly want to search for the phrase smoking behavior. And then I also thought of smoking cessation. So before you jump into the database search, think about your concepts um, and all the different words that represent them. Now, when you plug your terms into Scopus, you want to think about the plurals just as I had on the previous slide. Now, many databases, let me go back for a minute. In many databases, you have to type in both the singular and the plural in order to capture the articles that use both of those different words. Now, in Scopus, if you use um, one of those, so for example, if we search for e-cigarette, it's going to search for the singular and the plural. Um, and that's not true for most databases. So if you type in a phrase in Scopus and you put it in quotes, it's going to automatically search for both singular and plural. If you use the curly bracket, like I have there on the screen, it's only going to search for that phrase. It won't search for the plural. And then one of the other tools or tricks you can use is something called a wildcard. Um, it's also called a truncation symbol. And this also is uh, available in a lot of other databases. But it's an asterisk, and it lets you type in part of a word um, without having to type in all the different versions of that word. So in the example I have on the screen, if I type in T-O-X with an asterisk, it will automatically search for all the different words that start with T-O-X. So I don't necessarily have to type them all into the search box. Um, so it's a great trick if you have um, a lot of words that begin with you know, a few letters. You can type just that in with this asterisk instead of having to type them all in. So here we are in the Himmelfarb homepage. And um, Scopus is over here on the left under Popular Resources. I'm going to go ahead and click on Scopus. So you should see the Scopus interface. And you'll see a single search box here. Um, so let's think about our e-cigarette question and how we would run the search. So basically what you want to do is you want to have one search box for each concept in your topic or in your not in your topic, in your question. So our question has two concepts, e-cigarettes and smoking behavior. So we want to have one search box for each. So I can go ahead over on the right and click on this plus sign. So I've added another search box. So in the first search box, and you can see I was practicing this search, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in all of the terms representing my first concept. So I'm going to put them all in. And if I have a phrase, I'm going to put it in quotes. And that's telling the database to search for that exact phrase or the plural. And I'm going to join my synonyms with a capital OR. And so this is telling the database to search for any of these terms. So I want it to search for e-cigarette or e-cigarettes or electronic cigarette or vaping. So look for any of those words in article title, abstracts, and keywords. And then I want to add my smoking behavior. And there it is. Um, so again, I'm putting my phrases in quotes, and then I'm joining them with an OR. So I have all my e-cigarette terms and my smoking behavior terms. So I want the database to find any of the terms up here and any of the terms down here. Now if I scroll down, you'll see this limit link, and I can click on that. So from here, it doesn't give me a, a lot of limits to choose from, but I can choose the publication date. So if I'm interested in the last, let's say, articles within the last 10 years. Um, so we could do 2009 to the present. So that's all I'm going to enter here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Search down here. So we retrieved 1,916 documents, which seems like a lot. But you'll notice on this results page, there is a section or a column on the left that says refine results. So we could add additional limits 
to our search. So for example, let's limit to English language. So you can see that there are articles published in other languages here. So we'll limit to English language. Still over 1,800 articles, but that's okay. We can apply some additional limits if we want to. So let's take a look at our search results. And you'll see that the most recent ones are listed first, so 2019. You'll see for each citation, there's a link that says View Abstract. So we can click on that and take a look at the abstract for that article. You'll see a blue box. It says Full Text at Himmelfarb. And that's an indication that we should have the full text of that article. So that's what the Full Text at Himmelfarb link means, that you should click on it and you should be able to get to the full text. Now you might also see a link, let me see if I can find one, that instead of the full text at Himmelfarb, it will say find it at Himmelfarb. It looks like these are all full text, um, which is a good thing. But if you come across one that instead of full text says find it at Himmelfarb, that's an indication that we probably don't have the full text. So if that is the case, you can either you know, move on and find something that is full text, or you do have the option to order through interlibrary loan. And that means that you can place an electronic request and we can get it for you from another institution um, and we'll send it to you electronically. So you do have the option of ordering it. Um, and you get 15 free requests per semester. So that is an option. So a few other things about the search results page that I want to point out. So the column on the far right, it says cited by, and this is what I mentioned earlier. Um, this will tell you how many articles have cited a particular article since it was published. So again, these articles at the top here are very recent, published this year, so no one has cited them yet because there's zeros in that column. Um, so let's scroll down a little bit, see if we can find anything that has been cited so far. They're all very recent. All right, let's go to the next page. Looks like a lot of literature on, recent literature on electronic cigarettes. But you'll see number 30. This one was still published this year, but you'll notice that since it was published, two articles have cited it. Um, so let's say that this article was right on target for what we're searching for. If we click on this two, we can take a look at the articles that have cited it. And so these might lead us to other articles that we can use for our research. So it might lead you to other literature on the topic that perhaps you haven't already found. So that's one of the things I like about Scopus. Um, so actually, let's take a look at that article, so number 30. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to scroll down so you'll see the abstract. The other thing I wanted to point out is um, sometimes you'll see a list of keywords. Now this one, you'll see where it says indexed keywords, um, and mTree is actually another database that we don't have access to, but sometimes you'll see um, author supplied keywords, um, and this is uh, sometimes helpful if you're having trouble finding additional articles. You can take a look at the keywords and see if there's anything here, other terms that maybe you hadn't tried or hadn't thought of, and you can try these yourself. I'm going to scroll down a little more, and now I can see this article's reference list. So I can see that this article has 16 references. So similar to the cited by, you can look at this article's references and might, you might find other articles that are relevant to your research. So when you find a good article, you can go backward by looking at that article's references and then go forward by looking at that article's cited by list. All right, so let me go back. All right, um, so let me scroll back up to the top. Um, so with Scopus, there are some things that you can do with your search results. So um, Scopus is great in that it will format your citations in different citation styles. So let's say that um, I'm going to select, let's say, these first three articles, um, and I want to format them in a certain citation style. So I can go up to this uh, little 
where it says more menu items, these three dots, and click on it. And I could click on create bibliography. And I can pick from a number of different citation styles. Um, I'm going to keep it on APA. And then I could just click on create bibliography. I'm not sure why it's not working, but usually this works. And uh, it just spits out a, a bibliography of those citations in APA format. It's actually pretty, pretty useful, although I don't know why it's not working right now. But let me go back to the search page. So when you're doing a, a topic search, you know, whether it's in Scopus or whether it's in another database, this is the way you want to structure your search when you're doing a topic search. So you want to use one search box for each concept, and you want to join your synonyms with a capital OR, just like I did here. Now, the default, as I mentioned, is searching article, title, abstract, and keywords. You do have the option to use the drop-down box and select a certain field. So, you know, if we decide that for our search, we're getting way too many articles or articles that don't seem relevant, we could search perhaps the abstract field only. And actually, let's try that and see what it makes, how it looks um, when we do that. So I'm going to choose just searching the abstract. So even though 623 is still a lot, you can see it brought it down from 1800. Um, and I am always thinking that if the words appear in the abstract, that they're prob pro the article is probably about that. So that's one way to kind of narrow it down. So the other thing you can do is if you're looking for a particular article and you have the article title, you can plug in the title and the database will search for it. So let's say, let me get rid of these. Um, so what I would do in that case is I would choose article title. Um, and I could just type a title in here and the journal or the database would find it. So, you know, if I was looking at uh, an article, another article, and I found something in the reference list that sounded good and I wanted to search for that article, I could just search for the article title here. Another thing you can do is search by author. I'm not sure if this is uh, would be useful to you, but so instead of the document search here, I'm going to click on authors. Um, and I will just do a sample search. So my authored last name. So I'm going to use, um, as an example here, I'm going to use Lynn Goldman, the dean of the School of Public Health. So we'll put in Goldman and Lynn. And I'm going to click on search. Now, there's different Lynn Goldmans that came up. Um, but you can see that probably the first and third one are the ones that we want, and we can tell that because it's telling us that her affiliation is George Washington University. So we could potentially click on this and take a look at all her articles. And it looks like this one random article down here is also hers. Um, but it's a good way to kind of get a sense of if you're looking at a particular author, you can take a look at all the different articles that they've written. All right, so let's go back. All right, so I want to um, go back to our e-cigarette search for a minute. Okay, um, so one of the other things that you can do, um, again, not sure if you would use this, um, but I wanted to show you this analyze search results. So the search that we are looking at here is our e-cigarette search, and then this is where I narrow down to searching the abstract. And I'm just going to click on analyze search results. And it gives you a visual of how many articles were published on the topic by year. Um, and in this case, it's pretty interesting because it looks like uh, there was a peak for this topic uh, in about 2018, which I it's interesting. Again, not sure how useful this would be, but I just wanted to show you because Scopus does some pretty cool things. Um, and there's other tools you can use if you scroll down the page. There's all kinds of visuals um, that you can do. just wanted to show you that. All right, let's go back to results. In thinking about your search results, um, there's a couple ways that you can manage these. You can create a temporary list. So 
let's say that you're going through these articles and you want to kind of pick the ones that you think sound good that you want to put aside to look at later. So you could select the ones you want. I'll select a couple. And I can click on this button that says Add to List. So it's creating a temporary list for me of the articles that I selected. So potentially, you know, I could run another search and continue adding to my list. Now this list, this temporary list, is only going to stay here for this Scopus session. So when I log out of Scopus or when I sign out or close this window, it's going to go away. Um, and so I could view or manage my list. So I could click on that and I could see um, here are the ones that I added to my temporary list. So if you're running multiple searches and you want to kind of keep those in a certain place that you think are ones that you want to go back to, you can create a temporary list. Now with the ones that you selected, you can, as you can see here, um, you can do different things with them. So we can download them, we can export them, we can print them, we can email them. Um, so you have lots of options. Now, the other thing that you can do, and this is also the case for many of the other databases, is that you can create an individual database account where you can save search strategies, save your list. So for example, if you made a list here, um, you could save it. Um, you can also create alerts. So let's say that you're doing a systematic review. Um, and you have a very complex search strategy. You could create an account in Scopus, type in your search strategy, and then you could save it. So maybe you're not going to be able to finish going through all your results today, um, and you don't want to have to go back in and type in all your search results. You can save it, and um, that would require creating an account. So up at the top of the page, you'll see this register button. And that's how you would go about creating a Scopus account. Um, and it just asks you for information, your name, your email address, you create a password. Um, and then once you have that account um, within Scopus, again, you can save searches, you can create lists, you can set up search alerts. So for example, uh, again, if you have a long complex search strategy, you can save it and you can tell the database if there's any new results that come up for this search, send me an email once a week. So you can tell it to uh, alert you if there's any new citations. So that's really the value in creating an account, um, especially if you have a long search strategy so that, again, you don't have to keep typing it in when you go back to it. The other thing you can do is you can export citations to RefWorks. So let me just tell you very briefly what it is <clears throat> and how you can get your citations from Scopus into RefWorks. So RefWorks is a bibliographic management tool um, that helps you format citations. It helps you organize citations. Um, so you can create folders and kind of create your own little library of citations. So um, let's say that you're doing this search on electronic cigarettes um, and you're doing a search in Scopus. You're doing a search in PubMed, for example. You know, you can put all your citations that you find in Scopus you can export them to RefWorks or the ones that at least that you think you're going to use in this pa like when you're going to write your paper. So you can kind of keep your citations organized and then it will also help you format them. So if you're writing a paper and you need to format your citations in APA format, for example, RefWorks can help you do that. Um, and it's very similar to how I added them to my list. Um, you know, I select the citations I want and then I can click this export button. And it gives me some options here. Now, if I'm using RefWorks, um, I'm going to select the RefWorks um, link at the top. And then it's asking me what information I want to export. Um, and I probably want to export most of this information. Probably, I probably don't need funding details or other information. Maybe I need other information. Anyway, select what you want, and then you hit up. You hit the button that says export, and it should um, open your open RefWorks, prompt you to sign in, and then 
export them into your reference account. So it's very easy to get your citations from Scopus into RefWorks. You simply run your search, select the citations you want, click on export, and then select the appropriate boxes. So it's very easy. I think that I've covered all that I wanted to cover tonight. Um, just to reiterate what we've talked about, um, we've talked about how to do a document search. So if you're searching for a particular topic, how to enter your keywords and synonyms. And once you're looking at your search results, we talked about how to use limits like year and language. Uh, we talked about the cited by feature and looking at an article's reference list. And then we talked about um, doing a search by author. We also talked about um, creating a particular individual account in this database if you want to save searches or um, create alerts, which you can do. Well, that is all I have for tonight. Um, if you have other questions, you know, as you use the database or you use any of our resources, please feel free to contact me or any of the other reference librarians. Also on the library homepage on the right hand side, there is an Ask Us button, and so you can chat with a reference librarian as well. Um, so I appreciate your attendance, and um, thank you, and I hope you have a good night.